Hey guys, Jay Siemens here. Welcome to my new series, The Complete Guide to Ice Fishing. It has been a banner year for fishing license sales and I know a lot of people are gonna be getting into ice fishing this winter. I got a 10 part series coming your way brought to you by Travel Manitoba, teaching you everything you need to know to get on the ice. All right guys, you have all the gear you need to ice fish now, except you don't have line or anything on the end of your line to actually trick the fish into biting. So before we get any deeper, we're gonna talk about fishing line. There's kind of two or three main options. You've got braided line, which you've probably heard about. A couple pros and cons of braided line. Braided line is the most expensive. You're paying, you know, 15 to $25 a spool based on what size you're getting. Pros of braided line, it doesn't stretch. So when you're fishing deep, you can feel every little bite. It's a lot more sensitive. It lasts a lot longer. You can sometimes get multiple seasons out of spool of braided line. If you're using the clear line, monofilament or fluorocarbon, typically you need to swap it out a little bit faster. Um, some of the negatives about it, for ice fishing, it, even some of the ice lines, they do absorb some water. So they will freeze a little more if you're fishing outside. In a shack, it's great. Sometimes outside, it can get a little bit frustrating when they soak up water. I still use braid probably 95% of the time. Uh, you just have to deal with sometimes breaking that ice off your line. But all of these setups I'm gonna give you, you know, cater it to your specific situation. You know, I might say six pound test, but if you're fishing for slightly bigger fish in that class, you know, maybe you wanna go to 10, maybe you wanna go to 12. So, you know, there's a lot of personal preference in there too. I'm just gonna give you a few key setups that'll get you started. All right, so in this setup, we have a braided main line. This is six pound main line. It's probably got the diameter of like two pound monofilament. So you've got a full spool of this braided line. And then as you can see, I have probably a two foot, three foot chunk of this clear stuff. So this clear line is fluorocarbon or you could use monofilament. Um, in most situations as a leader material, you're probably gonna wanna use fluoro. It doesn't stretch as much as monofilament. It's clear as you can see, and it's got some good abrasion resistance. So you're using that braided line as your main line. It's really strong, really thin and then you're going to this leader material so the fish can't see it. Um, there's a bunch of different knots to use to attach. I use a uni to uni. It is a very quick knot. It is not the strongest. There's other options out there. There's the FG knot that I use from time to time. It, it takes a little more to tie. There's the uh, Alberto knot. All great options, you know, decide what you wanna learn. But in most situations, I'll just tie line to line. You can put a swivel in as well if line twist is something you're gonna be dealing with depending on the type of lure. But you got your braid, you got your fluoro, and then we got the business end. And this is the most basic setup. This is a split shot and a hook. And this is something I'd be using for negative to neutral fish. You're like, oh, well, Jay, what species could I use this for? Honestly, you could probably catch everything with this. I think depending on the size of the hook, I mean, you can go from a size two, this is called an octopus hook, size six, kind of somewhere in that range is great. And then you decide what to put on it. You could put trout dough on it. If you're fishing for stock trout, depending on your regulations, you can put a minnow on, you could put a rubber minnow on. I'm just gonna use a rubber minnow as a example. But if you put a salted minnow on here, you can catch walleye, you can catch perch, you can catch you know any type of stock trout. It's such a good fish catching rig. It just sits there. You, know, you can put a live minnow on it, it has a little more action. But typically this is a setup where you just set it and forget it. In a lot of jurisdictions, you're allowed to use multiple lines. So this is a great option as you know, as your second line. Once again, cater this to your setup. Right now we got, I think this is six pound braid to an eight pound fluorocarbon leader. If you're t specifically targeting perch, you might wanna do four pound braid and a four pound leader. Uh, you know, if there's big walleyes around, once again, you upsize all that. This is just so good for, you know, fish that are keyed into some scent and that aren't wanting to chase something moving around. It's obviously not the most exciting thing to fish, but it catches a lot of fish. You know, so often you're gonna be using the aggressive, you know, more flashy option, which I'm gonna be showing you guys shortly, and they'll come in and end up eating this, you know, finesse approach beside you. So depending on how you're set up, it is great having kind of that one-two punch. All right, moving up the spectrum from, you know, neutral to more aggressive, we're moving to the jig and plastic or jig and minnow, you know, a standard a fish catching machine once again. This is on the smaller side. And uh, something to take into account when you're thinking about, you know, what jigs do you want to get is how deep are you fishing, right? And then as well, do you want to go lead or tungsten? Tungsten is something that's become a lot more popular. Lead jigs are probably what you, you know, grew up fishing. Kind of the pros of tungsten are it's a lot denser than lead. So you can get a smaller jig that you can fish deeper more effectively. So when those fish are in a little more negative mood, you know, you might want to go tungsten. If the fish are in a 
positive mood, you can get away with lead. You can get away with a bigger jig and there might be situations where you want that. And as far as size goes, this is probably a little more on the, on the panfish side of things or smaller stock trout. Once again, if I'm targeting bigger walleyes and using you know, a big shiner or a three inch minnow or something, well, then it upsize everything. Same thing with your line. This setup for panfish here, I think once again, is four pound braid and approximately a four pound floral leader. So all very subjective to what you're doing. All right, next up, we're moving even more to the aggressive side. And, and sometimes it's more fun to fish these aggressive baits. Typically, if you're fishing in a more aggressive bait, the strike is more aggressive too, you know, compared to a, a fish just slowly coming up and nipping your jig. Some of the hits with these next two baits are absolutely electric. All right, next option, we're talking about jigging spoons and you know, we're getting more aggressive as we go. And something to keep in mind is in Manitoba, at least you can use two lines. So often what I'm gonna do is, as I mentioned, use one of those negative presentations, you know, a split shot and a minnow. And then on the other side, I'll be using something like this. This is a jigging spoon, this is aggressive. And it also depends how you work it. But like I said, the cool thing about these aggressive baits is when you work it aggressively, you're probably gonna get an aggressive strike. So this one, you're ripping up and down, you're pounding it in the mud. We'll, we'll include a shot or two of fish eating these but this will call fish in. Sometimes those other presentations don't have that same effect on fish. Some of these jigging spoons have little blades, some of them have rattles, and that has that more capability of bringing fish in. Uh, a jigging spoon like this, you know, you're maybe not gonna use for panfish quite as much, but as you move up the spectrum to bigger game fish, you know, walleyes absolutely love them. This is one of your top options for walleyes, for stock trout, you can catch lake trout on them. You'll probably catch pike on them even if you don't want to, but jigging spoon, great option. Same thing about your line to leader. Um, we're going braided line. This is a little bit heavier, 10 pound braid and an eight to 12 pound floral leader. All right, now we're at the far end of the spectrum for aggressive style baits. This bait is gonna call fish in. This is called a, it's called a rattle bait. As you can hear, it is so loud. When you're fishing beside your buddies in the shack 30 feet away, you can hear this rattling underwater. And what this can do is call fish in. Once again, you're gonna to wanna to work this aggressively. And, and every lure you want to you know, cater your action to, obviously the mood of the fish somewhat, but also the lure. If you're using a tiny jig and you know, a little bit of minnow or that split shot deal, you might either have it sitting still or just slight movement, right? Because it's not the type of thing you wanna be ripping up and down. This is aggressive. This you're ripping up and down and you are calling fish in. And the other cool part of this is you might call a fish in with a rattle bait and then it'll eat your negative or neutral you know, uh, offering right beside it. Rattle baits, something like this, is just a walleye killer. Rattle baits have accounted for so many big walleye on Lake Winnipeg over the last couple of years, it's ridiculous. You know, once again, refer to my last video on what rod you might wanna use, but this is the heaviest setup. This rattle bait right here, I could be using for lake trout. I could, you know, fish a smaller size rattle bait on that mid-size rod for walleyes. Once again, rattle bait, I'm gonna be a little bit heavier on my line. If I'm fishing for you know lake trout or pike, I'm gonna want it. obviously a steel leader for pike. For lakers, I'm wanting to be 15 to 25 pound leader material and a 20 to 30 pound main line. You know, all those things need to be taken into account. Rattle baits are so much fun to fish, and when you call them in aggressively like that, their hits can be just absolutely phenomenal. All right, guys, so that's four great options that are gonna be good for probably 95% of your ice fishing. Uh, another notable mention would be, you know, a big tube or a big soft plastic for either pike or lake trout, you know, a fluke style bait can be really good. Um, and that's more on the aggressive side. But we've got one other thing we didn't really touch on as far as, you know, lures go, and that is fishing big dead baits on the bottom. I'm gonna insert a little clip showing you what the quick strike rig is all about. It's tough to beat a big hunk of meat for a big pike. You can jig lures, you'll get big fish, but a big saucy mama like this is gonna catch you your biggest fish. Pike have a very strong sense of smell. They want a big meal. And this is a Cisco that I caught crappie fishing earlier this year. And this is pike candy right here. The rig we're using is called a quick strike rig. There's a couple different ways to make them. This one is essentially a piece of wire with two treble hooks. The one on the back is crimped in. The one in the middle is free sliding. This one rests pretty horizontal, which is good. Nice natural presentation. All right, so that's a quick strike rig. That's pretty much it for rigging. Once again, there is so many options out there. You know, experiment, figure out what's gonna work best for your body of water. All right, in the next video, we're gonna talk about what to use for your extra lines. We're talking tip-ups, iFish Pros, and jaw jackers.